Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics. This week's questions answered video, why don't you like shotguns? So I knew this was eventually gonna come up because I've made some comments in the past. Not really flippant uh, comments, just comments is the fact that I'm not a particular fan of the shotgun for a number of purposes. I do own one, uh, just one. I have owned numerous shotguns over the years, uh, both semi-automatic pump, pump action, and I've used them in law enforcement. I've just never been a really big fan of them for most purposes because there are some unique disadvantages to the shotgun that I feel that outweigh the advantages that it does give you. Now, of course, this is just my opinion based on my experience, uh, which I kind of already laid out a little bit. Uh, but I have had to use shotguns, uh, occupationally speaking, and I've also still used them to some degree for certain ballistic properties when I'm teaching class, especially vehicle classes. Because uh, the 12 gauge does provide a very high degree of devastation, terminally ballistically speaking, um, especially at close ranges, although with a rifle barrel and improved choke, or I wouldn't say improved choke, but improved barrel, improved barrel, uh, you can get great ballistic performance out of the shotgun at distance. The number one issue, I guess, that I always had with the shotgun is limited ammunition capacity, and being that the pump is far more prevalent than the semi-automatic shotgun is, um, method of operation under stress has always been a concern for me, and it's something I've witnessed uh, numerous times in force-on-force -force scenarios, and then a few times um, real world, if you will, where an operator who hasn't trained a proficiency on the firearm, on the shotgun, especially the pump action shotgun, can short stroke or introduce other types of malfunctions into the weapon um, that you're not necessarily going to see with a semi-automatic or select fire rifle. Now, of course, getting that out of the way, uh, I don't think there's any, I, I guess I could say weapon firearm, that has more pervasive myths that surround it than the shotgun. Often your really bad gun store advice centers around a revolver for a woman or a shotgun for home defense. Those are the two categories where we get a lot of chuckles from, but some people really do walk away believing very incorrect things about the shotgun. Um, as a home defense weapon, it's usually the weapon that's suggested for home defense, but no one can really point to why. There's the old racking it and the bur burglar will run away, which may or may not work. Uh, but another thing that comes up a lot, and I think most people are aware that this isn't necessarily true, is the fact that you don't really have to aim with a shotgun, and that's absolutely not the case. On your standard length barrel unimproved choke, you're firing a non-slug load, say a double lot, triple lot buck, number four shot, even bird shot. Your relative expansion is gonna be one inch per meter. That's not a great deal of expansion. Now, when you start making barrels shorter, you do get more expansion, but then you get into SBS issues, which is an NFA item, something you want to use for home defense, which is another topic. There are a great deal of, uh, of payloads available for the shotgun, which makes it very, very versatile. You've got slugs, uh, you've got improved Sabo rounds, you've got double lot, triple lot, number four shot, number six shot, number eight shot. You've got rock salt if you're into that. You've got novelty rounds like flechette and dragon's breath. And there's a lot of fun that can be had with a shotgun. But when it comes to using the firearm for self-defense, the shotgun requires a higher degree of efficiency, if you will, than, say, an AR-15. Ballistically speaking, is the shotgun more devastating? than a 223 round. It depends on the payload, depends on the distance, depends on the context of the situation. All things considered, probably. Um, just the just looking at the size of the payload or the size of the bullet or the size of the round itself, you are going to be able to deliver more damage on your target. However, you're going to be able to you're not going to be able to deliver that damage as fast and you're also going to run out of ammunition sooner. Because I can't presuppose the situation that I'm going to find myself in, I would rather stack the odds in my favor with a 30 or a 60 round magazine in an AR uh, than I would with an 8 or a 9 shot tube on a shotgun. Or if you want to go magazine fed, such as like a Sagia type shotgun, that's also an option as well. Recoil is a thing. Recoil on a 12 gauge, your most common uh, shotgun, is a thing, um, which causes a problem with resettling the sights. Not a huge deal for the most part, but I think anybody who owns a shotgun and an AR can agree that it's much easier to settle the sights on an AR platform than it is on a 12 gauge. In the unlikely event that you have to reload the weapon system, um, it's going to be much easier to reload an AR platform rifle than it is a 12 gauge. Obviously much faster as well. So those are some situations that you run into as well. I consider the shotgun, especially the pump action, to be a very antiquated weapon system. That doesn't mean it's not viable. It doesn't mean it's something you can't use knowledgeably, but you have to make sure that you know how to run it and you know how to run it effectively and you can reload it in ideal and less than ideal situations. 
um, we start to break from reality and get further and further into the less likely, or, and which is eventually going to get us closer to fantasy land, we start talking about the scenarios in which the shotgun would be beneficial over the rifle, because you can game that all day long. Uh, but I want to set, I want to stack the odds as as, as favorably uh, in in my favor as I can. Uh, an AR is easier to suppress, um, and I prefer to use a suppressed rifle indoors if I have that choice. If I'm going to go the NFA route and go ahead and get my tax stamps, get my short barrel rifle, and get my suppressor, use that for home defense. Uh, and then it's an easier platform to work your loved ones into, um, especially if your loved one's wife, husband, girlfriend, sister, brother, cousin, child. Um, isn't as pro-gun or as interested in uh, training to be proficient as you are. Uh, it's much easier to bring someone up to speed and to get someone willing to practice the AR platform rifle, and it is going to be a 12 gauge. So I don't hate shotguns. I just don't see as much use for them um, as I do an AR platform rifle. If someone's going to ask me, what do I recommend rifle-wise for home defense? The AR is going to be the number one rifle or number one weapon that I'm going to recommend for the reasons that I've kind of laid out. It doesn't mean the shotgun can't be used. It just means that, as far as I'm concerned, there are far more advantages to the AR platform rifle than there are the 12 gauge. And there's the disadvantages for the shotgun are more severe than the disadvantages you're going to get from the AR. The one thing that you are gaining from the shotgun on a strictly ballistic. Uh, category is the fact that the rounds can be extremely devastating in close ranges when we're talking about turbo ballistics on the human body. Um, that's a very distinct advantage that the 12 gauge is going to have. Outside of that, there are none. Having said that, the shotgun definitely still has a place. Um, it's an excellent uh, ballistic breaching tool. It's really the only ballistic breaching tool that's going to be uh, effective across a wide degree of mediums that you're likely to encounter if your profession requires you to breach doors. Uh, and for less lethal or animal control payload, obviously, it's going to be very advantageous because the payloads available for an AR, uh, they're not going to fill that same role. So the shotgun isn't something that we're just going to completely retire. I don't think it's ever really going to go away. Um, but it's not something that I'm going to recommend uh, to students um, outside of them working it toward proficiency. When I do have students come to, say, my home defense class, I have a, a semi-munitions force-on-force-based home defense class. If a student chooses to, they can, use, they can bring their pump-action shotgun, and I will convert it to run semi-munitions rounds for the class, so they get to use their actual shotgun in the class. Every now and then, I get a student who actually shows up, uh, brings his pump-action 870 or 500 or whatever shotgun he has. We convert it over, and after his first scenario, he either is very suddenly uncomfortable with the shotgun or he wants to set the shotgun aside and try out the AR and ends up sticking with it throughout the rest of the class. Uh, under stress, it's very easy to induce malfunctions in that 12 gauge. Um, and again, this is stress that's very hard to recreate outside of a force on force environment. Does that mean that you won't be able to run a shotgun under stress? No, absolutely not. But it does mean that you need to adhere to a higher degree of discipline when it comes to practicing the shotgun um, and practicing the shotgun in the most varied ways possible to make sure that that proficiency is going to be there when you need it. So as the joke will continue, yes, I hate shotguns, but realistically, I've just given you my, my opinion. I've laid it all out. Um, it does serve a purpose, uh, but it's not something, like I said, that I'm going to recommend or I'm really going to push hard over an AR platform rifle. It does have a niche, which I talked about, but outside of that niche, the AR platform rifle is going to be the way to go. I'm Aaron Cowan with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.